Hey guys, let's end the week nice and easy with a quick lesson on saving files in Adobe Illustrator. Now, Illustrator is a very versatile program. It can output vector files, uh, and it can also output just regular images like Photoshop or other programs can. Now let's look at all the different options we have for saving the files and some of the interesting uh, quirks, if you will, about saving different file types. There's a couple ways to save a file in Adobe Illustrator. Obviously, they're both through the file menu, but you can save as, you can save a copy, that's kind of obvious, and save for web. Those are the real two ones we're going to focus on is save as and save for web. Um, save selected slices is for the slicing tool, and save a template is really to create a default document with certain settings uh, in Illustrator. If you're going to be making the same thing over and over again, you may want to save it as a template. First, let's look at our Save As options. A pretty basic dialog box that you're probably used to seeing. And we're going to look here at the Format menu. And let's look at all the different formats. So you can see here we can save a plain old Adobe Illustrator file. That's .ai, standing for Adobe Illustrator, obviously. Then we can save an Illustrator EPS file right here. And an EPS file is basically a generic sort of postscript file. In fact, EPS stands for Encapsulated Postscript, which is a, a nice vector file that will maintain a good amount of your art data, except for maybe a few different effects that you can have only in Illustrator, and lets you output those and give them to, say, somebody with Corel Draw or somebody with any older version of Illustrator. All these things are really, really compatible. So you can basically use an EPS anywhere. In fact, if you're going to give something to a t-shirt shop or you're going to give something to a printer, you might want to give them an EPS. Here we have another option again to save as a template if we wish. We can save it as an Adobe PDF. So Illustrator files can output PDFs and they will retain their vector properties. So it'll be one of those PDFs that when you zoom in, It'll still be nice and clear and easy to read. And it does that for text and images inside of Illustrator documents. Adobe FXG file, we don't really use those very often. And then finally, we have SVG files. Now, there's plenty of articles on the web that can tell you about SVGs, but SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And that's basically a type of image on the web that will allow you to size up, zoom in, zoom out, and not lose quality, displaying your vector artwork in its full vector perfection on the web and on different devices like I, TomToms use SVG files, uh, your many cell phones have SVG files for their graphics to account for different screen sizes. Um, there's plenty of benefits to SVG files, but right now we're going to go to in an Illustrator file, and we're going to hit save, and we're going to give it a different name so it doesn't just save over it. Now we get another option, where we're asked to say what version of Illustrator we're saving this for. And you can see we go down all the way to these important versions of Illustrator, and you can see, well, they're skipping some numbers. Well, these are the versions of the Illustrator that are either the most recent, right, or when you see spaces like 8 and 3, those are times where there were major revisions to the Illustrator format. And finally, Japanese Illustrator, which uh, I'm not entirely sure I've never had to use that option. Next, we have create a PDF compatible file. Uh, substituting fonts, right? You can have it change the fonts so somebody doesn't have the fonts. Uh, you can embed your ICC, that's color profiling, use compression, really keeping your files small. And uh, if you have multiple artboards, you can make each artboard in your document a separate Illustrator file right here. Finally, we have things about transparency that we don't have to worry about. We'll hit OK. Next is saving things for web and devices.
Now when we save for web, you can see we get a whatever pixel size version of our image exists. And if we zoom in, and I can do that with command plus, you can see this is a PNG, right? So we do have pixels. So Illustrator can output regular old images uh, like what you see here. And in fact, over here in our tools, you can see all the different files that we can select. Let's make it a JPEG. And we'll zoom in on our JPEG and we can see the pixels and watch when we slide our quality. So you can see this is the same type of image uh, compression that you would get with, say, an Adobe Photoshop. Again, you have an option to save as an SVG here. You can also save as an SWF file, right? So that's a Flash file. Uh, if somebody has something in Flash or they need uh, an output of that, you can use that. You can also take stuff in Illustrator and copy and paste it right into Flash or right into Photoshop or right into InDesign. And that stuff should all be able to scale up and scale down as long as you, I think in Photoshop it's called a smart object, and in the other programs it should just scale. Obviously with some conversion things depending on your medium, right? So there's a lot of options for saving files in Illustrator. And if you say wanted a lot of detail, and I'll put it in PNG mode, when we zoom out, this is the size it's going to save it as. If we come over here to image size, we get the exact pixel count and what percentage. Now we can say, let's save this as 400% and hit apply. What that's going to do is re-render our picture and blow it up four times. So now you can see we have 3,000 pixels for our width, 1,700 something. Uh, for our height. And when we zoom in, yeah, there's pixels, but the image has gotten so much finer um, that it's impossible to tell at a pretty large scale um, that you're pixelated. So we hit save, and that will output a file. I'm not going to do that just because we don't need the extra file there, but that's saving in Illustrator. Um, now, Illustrator doesn't have autosave or anything like that. Um, in fact, Adobe's yet to implement any any stateless sort of automatic save in their programs. So, save early, save often. If you're about to do something and you're not sure of what the results are going to be, save. You know, Illustrator has a long history and, and you're able to undo a lot of steps. Um, but, save. <laughs> save a lot and make sure to save Illustrator documents if if you want to be able to reuse it. If you're just uh, interested in getting an image out, save the image and save the Illustrator document too because you never know if you're going to need to change or tweak it. That is saving an Illustrator. Coming up in next week's lesson, we're going to be dealing with all the powerful palettes and all the crazy things that you can do with them. There's a lot of them, a lot of complex controls, but that's going to set us up for success when it comes to effects.